You're saying in a sense that they gave up the fight in their mind before they gave it up on the field. Cricket is a game at this level, it's 70% it's played in the mind. You have ability, that's the reason you are here. From predicting the baller's ball, to setting up the perfect field, to even which shot to play, it's mind over body at all times. And if you break the mind, you break the opponent. Australians learned this lesson very early and employed it against every opponent they faced. Winning against every opponent they faced. Till they faced that one opponent and one team who decided to respond back. This is the story of the 2001 Border Gavaskar Trophy of Saurav Ganguly and his team who outplayed Australia in their own game. 1969. That was the last time Australia won a series on Indian soil. And riding on the back of a record 15 consecutive test victories, Stivo, the Australian captain, declared India as the final frontier. And in typical Australian fashion, he publicly announced that the upcoming three tests were going to be number 16, 17 and 18. Now normally, India, like most countries, would have just ignored those comments as simple mind games, which was the norm at the time. But this time, this time, the opponent was a bit different. Savarao Ganguly, the young Indian captain, quickly jived back, enjoy the rest and forget about 16, 17, 18. Coming from a young captain of a young team to a decorated World Cup veteran, this was nothing short of disrespectful. And when I say young team, I mean a really young team. This side had Sachin with 81 matches, Mongya and Dravid with 40 plus matches and the rest were just young whelps starting out. Compared to Australia, with only 3 players having less than 20 matches, the rest being veterans of the World Cup. So not only was it disrespectful, but also very audacious. And it didn't end there. Come the start of the first test, Saurav Ganguly promptly made the world champion wait for him for the toss. And then he did it again in the second test. The entire Australian management was so enraged that they went and complained to the match referee, saying that he was being disrespectful. Not to them, huh? Not to them. But to the game. The match referee then admonished the young captain who quickly apologized and then again came late for the third test. Fearless of rules, fearless of consequences, fearless of opponent's reputation. And he instilled this in his team too. They were told before the match, if Australians can be tough, so can we. If they cross a line, then freely throw the ground at them. Never take anything lying down. To take away this fear of veterans, he dictated that each and every junior had to share a room with the senior henceforth. Now for Indian cricket, which was used to work on strict hierarchy before that, this came as a huge shocker. But it bore fruit soon. In the first test, with war in form, Hemang Badani had come in as a substitute fielder. And he straight away started jabbing at the Australian legend, pestering him to hit the spinners, dissing his short selection. A player who didn't even have his debut yet was sledging an Australian legend. What an idea, Sirji. <laughs> Finally getting on War's nerve, War said, first play a game for your side and then come and talk to me. The rookie Indian cricketer didn't back off and hit back at War saying, doesn't matter if I have played a game or not. You do your job and let me do mine. Incidentally, it was Badani who had the last laugh as he took the catch of War in the end. Even Indian veterans seem to be influenced by this. Rahul Dravid, playing on 17, played a shot which hit the short leg fielder, flew in the air only for Michael Slater to dive in and claim the catch. However, despite Slater claiming the catch, Dravid had his doubts and he refused to budge from the crease. Umpire S. Venkatraguan called for the third umpire and after several minutes of replays, Dravid was given not out. This decision 
sent Michael Slater into a blind rage. He walked up to umpire Venkat Raghavan and argued about the decision. Later, he even exchanged words with Dravid, who simply stood there, motionless. The result? Slater was banned for a match and Dravid calmly continued playing. Even after the humiliating defeat in the first test in Mumbai and the loss of their ace pace Ashnat in the second test, the famous Kolkata test, in the greatest test to be ever played, Ganguly decided to enter the fray. Balling to the inform Hayden, after each ball, he used to stand and jibe at Hayden, telling him how lucky he was to not get out just then, inviting Hayden to hit him. But the world champions won champions just for name. They hit back hard. After finishing up India in only 200 runs, while coming off the pitch, they started walking behind VVS Lakshman, the only batsman on the Indian side who had crossed 50 runs. And then together, the entire team started discussing how boring it was to play against India. That they shouldn't even give them follow on, they should just go and rest. Or they can even finish it off today itself. It will be easy, right? All of this just to rile up a single batsman after the innings was done. Ganguly, the instigator, was their special target. He at the time was embroiled in a controversy involving an actress. Gossips of Ganguly's marriage and career being in trouble was about. Now Australians, whenever Ganguly came out to bat, used to greet him with who is she? Come on, tell now, who is she? Especially in the second innings, with Ganguly building a partnership with Lakshman, the entire Australian team, in each break, between each ball, used to talk about Ganguly's affair in detail. And it wasn't just on the pitch. The entire Australian media at the time had decided to join the battle. From his form up to his morality, anything and everything was open game. It was to the point that on the first day of the second test, Ian Chappell, ex-Australian captain, actually wrote an editorial in an Indian newspaper. Ganguly has made a number of poor decisions, not all of them on the field. However, it is his arrogance towards his fellow players that is the biggest threat to his captaincy. Now Ganguly being Ganguly, right on the next day, on the same page of the same newspaper gave his own editorial saying while I respect his rights to be critical of my batting and captaincy he has no business talking about things that he does not know firsthand and as more of this dirty laundry was being spilled into the media the last straw came on day 3 of the test Megrath balling to Ganguly walked up to him and asked how is she? sexual implications abound. An enraged Ganguly completely lost his focus, giving an easy catch. And he's gone. He's got a neck and Glenn McGrath has got to under the skin of Ganguly before getting him out. McGrath actually went on to brag about it, about how he had angered Ganguly into taking his wicket on his own editorial in a newspaper the next day. Mind you, this was the same team that expounded on the fact that they never bring families into sledging. I won't even demean the word hypocrisy by calling it that year. But continuing on, even Dravid, the calm gentleman who had switched places with Lakshman, had to endure constant questions of first three, now sixth, the next one should be 12, right? Straight out of the game, throughout the morning, the sledging continued. Then came lunch. By tea though, the entire Australian team had shut their mouth. Ganguly, Lakshman and Dravid had shut Australians up, the former with his mouth, the latter with their bats, single-handedly managing to save the test and save India's pride. Come the last day of the test, Saurav dropped was catch. And Steve Waugh walked up to him to say, you dropped the test match there, mate. This were nearly the exact same words that Vaughan had said to Gibbs when Gibbs had dropped him in the 1999 World Cup and then had gone on to prove it by scoring a half century. This time though, witnessing the same words was Dravid, who was standing beside Ganguly in the slips. 
and when nan mongia was attired hurt dravid a sick with flu medicated exhausted dravid was asked by the captain to become the wicket keeper the wall hadn't forgotten those jibes at him at his captain at his team and he calmly donned the pads wanting to hit the nail home in the next over as soon as one was caught dravid walked up to him and asked who dropped the test now the answer was apparent soon enough india forced to follow on beaten and humiliated had defeated australia breaking their win record and by winning the next test they had won the series understand what happened here though coming from behind a bunch of new lands when pushed and prodded into a corner had rolled back at the lions years after this series gilchrist went on to say that this was the series which made them rethink their game plan we had to eat our ego we had to change our approach wo went on to say that ganguly was the first captain that changed the perception of how india played cricket and finally finally this was the match which prompted greg chapel yes that greg chapel to say that ganguly is the steve of mind games thank you for watching this video if you like this video kindly like share and subscribe thank you for watching